Hello citizens, Digital Master here, bringing you my guide series on food and drink in Star Citizen. At the time of starting this series, we are currently in Alpha 3.17. However, I do plan to update this series as the development continues until live release and beyond. The goal of this series is to expand as more concepts are added into the game in relation to the Hunger and Thirst system. Right now, there isn't a lot there other than the initial foundation. So the topic of food and drink as it is implemented today is at tier zero, but there are some interesting and strategic things you can do already as it relates to what your character eats and drinks. As of 317, hunger and thirst are now persistent as well. So you may find yourself minding your diet a bit more than before which for the long-term big picture is a good thing. It is worth highlighting the fact that this system will continue to expand and deepen as the time goes on. CIG has already laid the foundation for what appears to be a very significant survival and buff and debuff system for your character in Star Citizen. For those of you who are not aware of how deep this is intended to go, I hope this video series sheds light on the potential of this system when Star Citizen is ready for live release. With that said, let us begin. This video in particular is the introduction to the food and drink system. And I want to make you aware that though the foundation of this system is in, there is not a ton understood about how it works under the hood for some food and drink buffs and debuffs specifically. I have run some preliminary tests with inconsistent results for quite a few buffs and debuffs, but they are intended to have function and I will speculate on these parts until CIG provides more information regarding these mechanisms in game. So here's my table of contents for this first video in the series. We'll start talking about the basics of hunger and thirst, and then we'll move on to how hunger and thirst are satiated, and then we'll go into a little bit more detail about how it all works underneath the hood for what we actually know so far. We'll then move to other factors that impact hunger and thirst, and then also we'll have a short section about the different restaurants and food shops that are currently available in game. We'll finish it all off with some best practices that I currently use, and I will actually encourage you to share your own in the comment section below. So let's cover the basics. Food and drink in Star Citizen are important to your character's survival. Star Citizen is a game that is intended to be a very deep and enthralling experience. Hunger and thirst are two of the main gameplay mechanisms along with the medical system that will be the foundation of the survival aspects of this game. You will have to take care of your character and be mindful of their well-being that goes beyond simply not getting shot or having your ship blown up. Your character can die of thirst or hunger just as they can be impacted by wounds or injuries that linger. You will also be impacted by the benefits or detriments provided by different food and drink items that you choose to consume. Your first time logging into the game, you will enjoy a brief respite before hunger and thirst begin to degrade. When that time comes, you will notice in the bottom left of your screen a water droplet or food compound icon. When these icons show up in the bottom left, they will have a blinking down arrow to the bottom left of the icon. They will also have a percentage value underneath which indicates how hungry or thirsty your character is. When the icons show up in the bottom left, this is an indication that thirst and or hunger is now degrading over time. The speed at which this degrades can change depending on different factors and we will discuss this more in just a moment. For now, just know that if you do not satisfy hunger and thirst and allow it to reach 0%, your character's health will decline quickly as a result and your character will die. To solve this, you can find food and drink at landing zones, LaGrange points, rest stops, and some other locations around the system found in loot boxes. 
In the game, there are many locations where food and drink can be found. Maybe the most important being where you start your journey when you first log into the game. All landing zones have a place to get food or drink. In New Babbage, you can find a great deal of food options at the Commons and the Spaceport. While in Orison, you can also find plenty of food options just about anywhere you are. The Habs, Shopping Center, Industrial Complex, as well as the August Dunlow Spaceport. On Orson, finding food is not difficult at all. In Area 18, you can find food mainly at the spaceport with the new coffee vendor, though as more vendor types come online and into the game, the Art Court Plaza may prove to offer a large array of food and drink items as well. In Hurston, there is only Tammany and Sons that offer a very small set of options, and by that I do mean very small. Hurston is known to be a bit oppressive, so no surprises there. There are a few restaurants and food shops currently in the game. These places tend to offer specific types of food and drink, items that range from providing only buffs all the way to a mixture of buffs and debuffs. In Star Citizen, you can view this as the equivalent of healthy versus unhealthy in the real world. So, this may seem a bit trivial of a thing to cover, as you can imagine, eating food when hungry means, well, you are no longer hungry, right? Well, yes, of course, but in Star Citizen, as with everything else in the game, there is more to it than that. Just as in real life, what you eat has a deeper effect than what one might think. We'll start with food, as in the game's lore, there is what is known as the NDR or Nutritional Density Rating. The NDR is the score of nutrition value of food items in the game. As far as how this works in game, it is essentially the number by which hunger is increased when a food item is consumed. Each food item has its own unique NDR value, as well as some food and drink items that satiate both hunger and thirst. So when evaluating the food that you are about to consume, the NDR number is the value by which the hunger meter will recover. If your hunger is at 50% and the item you are about to eat has an NDR of 25, your hunger will recover to 75% once consumed. Please note that the way this works now can and probably will change over time as the game is still in development and nothing is yet final. For thirst, there is the HEI, or the Hydration Efficacy Index. As you might imagine, this is the score of hydration level of drink items in the game. The function is the same as the NDR for food, but for thirst. It is worth noting that most if not all food and drink items also have a pause effect on the degradation of hunger and thirst. This is to say that once you eat or drink something, the hunger degrading will stop for a specific period of time. In my own personal test, most items pause this meter for a minimum of 15 or roughly 15 minutes of real time, where the greatest pause I have seen was for over an hour. And this is typically your Vesta waters or more of those energy drinks. This leads me to the buff and debuff mechanic that is also a part of this system in the game. We will start with listing all buffs for both food and drinks. Here is a list of the current buffs as reported by CIG when I believe Alpha 3.9 was released that you can find in the game today. Now before I list these, I want to say that I have not been able to confirm the effects on my character at the time of this video. However, these buffs are expected to have an impact. Whether due to bugs or inconsistencies, I do not feel confident enough in my findings to share them here just yet. However, I will continue my testing and or wait for CIG to flesh out the system further and then share my findings later in this series. 
Let's begin. Number one, the energizing buff. This allows your character to be active longer. Number two, the cognitive boosting buff. This provides additional focus. Number three, the hypometabolic buff. This satisfies hunger longer. Number four, the immune boosting buff. Your character stays healthy longer when exposed to harmful elements. Number five, hypertrophic buff. Muscles perform optimally. Number six, the hydrating buff. This satisfies thirst for a longer period. Number seven, the healing buff. This helps your body naturally repair itself. What you may notice when eating and drinking both buff and debuffed items is that there may appear a plus sign above the hunger or thirst icons in the bottom left. This can actually be one plus sign, two plus signs, or even three plus signs, which actually indicate the intensity of the buff or debuff. Again, I cannot quantify the actual way this affects your character as my tests were inconclusive. Regardless, when you see this, you can be certain that whatever buff or debuff that is associated with the item you just consumed has been activated in some way or another. Now on to the food and drink debuffs. Number one, the fatiguing debuff. This has a draining effect on your character, causing lethargy and a general sense of exhaustion. Number two, cognitive impairing debuff. This stymies brain function, making it difficult to focus. This is one that is visible and easy to identify in the game. Just drink a few alcoholic drinks or overdose on some meds and you will see what I am talking about. Number three, hypermetabolic debuff. This causes players to digest quickly, which leads to hunger faster. Number four, the immune suppressing debuff. This weakens the body's ability to fight off harmful elements. Number five, the atrophic debuff. This restricts blood flow, affecting the muscles, making tasks seem harder. Number six, the dehydration debuff. This makes the player thirsty. Its effect is that it causes the player's body to lose water. And number seven, toxic debuff. This contains elements that are detrimental to your health and can cause damage if consumed in large quantities. So that is essentially the food and drink system in the game. However, there are some more considerations to share that are very important. There are other factors that impact your character regarding hunger and thirst, and one of the big ones that I can personally confirm is activity. The level of activity you are participating in will greatly impact your hunger and thirst. Examples include running, walking, standing, or sitting. In my test, I can confirm that sprinting while thirst is degrading can speed up that decay to as fast as 30 to 38 seconds between percentage points where when standing or sitting will cause it to degrade as slow as roughly one minute and 30 seconds. So you can essentially preserve or exhaust your hydration and hunger based on how active your character is at any given moment. This can also impact when thirst and hunger are not degrading as it can speed up the time to when degrading actually begins again. I believe there may be more factors and considerations here, but I have yet to confirm them myself with the test that I have run. If you have any thoughts to share, please do so in the comments section below. So let's briefly share some of the restaurants you can run into in the game and what they generally offer. Number one, Twins Sandwiches. As the name suggests, Twins sell sandwiches. They also offer Vesta water and Synergy drinks. The sandwiches, as you might expect, only satiate hunger, and they have no buffs or debuffs. The Synergy drinks satiate both thirst and hunger, though hunger is satiated for a near negligible amount. However, Synergy drinks carry one of the highest, if not the highest, thirst quenching HEI so far in the game. Number two, Garcia's Greens. One of the healthiest places that you can eat in the game, Garcia's offers fruits, vegetables, and smoothies. 
The smoothies are very good for significantly solving hunger and thirst when consuming one item, though they're not the best. They satisfy hunger for a very high amount and then hunger for a reasonable amount as well. These smoothies also carry the immune boosting buff. Garcia's greens also carry the fruits and vegetables as mentioned, of which provide good buffs and the occasional debuff to your character, while solving hunger and thirst for lower amounts. The Potambu is a good option as it provides 3 buffs and no debuffs, while satisfying hunger and thirst for a moderate amount. Number 3, Elroy's. To me, Elroy's is more of a bakery and coffee energy drink shop, though you will only find coffee related drinks at the rest stops as of 317. Elroy's also sells cruise drinks which work very similar to the smoothies mentioned earlier, but they satisfy hunger and thirst much better and for a significant amount. Smoothies are great, but the cruise drinks are the best drinks that satisfy both hunger and thirst. Now Elroy's also sell the Patambu and a smaller selection of fruits and vegetables depending on which location you are at. You will also find protein bars here which are a great food option when on the go. They take up only a small portion of your inventory capacity. And finally Elroy's also sells ice cream cones which doesn't do much for hunger. They do energize but they also cause you to get hungry faster. So, Whammers is your fast food burger joint. You will find an assortment of unhealthy burgers to eat that satisfy hunger quite well, but speed up both the hunger and thirst over time. Whammers also sells Fizz and Sips drinks. Fizz and Sips drinks are more like your typical Coke products. Sips provides energy while Fizz drinks are quite dehydrating. And finally, Keltu. On Orison, the Keltu store is a one-stop shop that sells almost anything that you need. For all the restaurants and stores listed already, you will find just about all their options sold here as well. I am not sure if this is permanent or not, but as of right now, Keltu provides a wide range of food and drink products, including alcoholic drinks. So, now that you have a good primer on the food and drink system in Star Citizen, I would like to share some best practice that I currently use to optimize my hunger and thirst management. Number one, pack a lunch. You will find that having something available mid-mission will be much better than not having something. There is nothing more disappointing than having to leave a mission or divert due to hunger and thirst. So, always plan ahead. Number two, restock whenever possible. Have food in every location where you plan to spend more or most of your time. Number three, stock up on drinks that satiate both hunger and thirst. So cruise drinks and smoothies are great for solving both hunger and thirst at the same time. There are also some foods that do this like apples and other fruits and vegetables. Finally, number four, place and leave food in your armor inventory. When you change armor or buy new armor, place food in your chest and leg pieces. Of course you should do the same for backpacks, but if all of your armor has something to eat within, even if you forget to buy something, chances are you have something stored conveniently in one of your armor pieces. Well, that is it for this introduction to the food and drink system. I do hope it was helpful, and if so, please leave me a like on the video and subscribe if you so desire. Again, this is Digital Master, and it is my pleasure to make videos like this. So thank you for watching, and I do hope to see you one day in the verse.